Welcome, this is Barry Jones from the Angel School, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for May 14th through the 20th, 2018. So let's just take a moment to take a deep breath together and to just clear your mind of anything that's sort of concerning you at this time. And just allow yourself to focus on all the rewards that you have uh, experienced and the little tiny blessings here and there. Things maybe just somehow um, go in an unexpected ways, but in but ways that were uh, good. I get a sense that they want you to um, not to give so much attention only to the, your concerns, your problems, and things that are going wrong, um, and to be less critical of yourself and life and your choices. Um, it's, this doesn't really help um, to sort of, uh, sort of reinforce our I don't know, it's like, a, like we're trying to become very disciplined, spiritual, spiritually disciplined, and, and, you know, they almost want to sort of say to you, well, we're, you know, we, we are, um, congratulate you in a way for being so uh, mindful and thoughtful, but you don't want to, to um, only have this critical, uh, you don't want to be sort of, um, analyzing everything that you're doing and this can kind of backfire on you when you are just looking at everything that you're not doing or you should be doing um, and so they want to help you to shift because this is only um, this approach is making it difficult it's sort of choking um, all the joy out of the out of your experiences and they want you to write in these things that they want you to be happy that's all they want for you they don't want um, for you to you know be constantly judging yourself and judging others and, and trying to figure out you know what's the cause of this and the cause of that um, spend more time if you're going to do that investigating the cause of the things that go well for you. Um, you know, things that are, that make you happy. Investigate, you know, what made you so happy in this experience? What made it, um, what makes this opportunity so uh, fulfilling for you? What, what gives you, what about it inspires you? You know, um, and it, what are the things that you enjoy that, that, you know, in terms of your creativity that allows you to express yourself? And how does it feel when you are expressing yourself and, and through whatever medium um, that your talents seem to flourish? What is it about it that is so good and, and so exciting and thrilling for you? What makes you feel so connected and um, sort of reassured and confident and fearless at moments when you are so uh, immersed in the activities that um, just sort of cause you to relish and take great pleasure and cause you to feel such a sense of power. You know, what is focusing and wanting to understand and wanting to be more, um, clear and more present to these moments as they are occurring for you, especially as they are occurring for you. Because in this moment of this, just this kind of sort of um, activity of just being present and acknowledging the things that are working well and acknowledging when you're having a sense of flow or prosperity that is representative of all of your your gifts 
of your mind, your ability to love, your ability to, um, to sort of perceive things in, uh, at a higher vibration and to see the good uh, in yourself and the good in others, to see, see, to see also, to have an eye where you are able to transform the the negative into the positive this is sort of like we, they're sort of giving me the, a healing eye which comes through love and so you want to look at your your world even when it's all not all perfect but you want to look at it with a healing eye a healing perspective where you can transform um that situation that you know that within you are the resources the the ability the the reality the ability to heal by seeing um possibilities in the situations that are occurring for you when you are criticizing you're not able to heal you're not able to share wisdom you're not able to um sort of sort of uh, have a this gift of clarity that God gives to you. And so they want you to ask more for those of you who find it very difficult to, you know, just turn the switch and uh, flip the switch and, and, you know, just start seeing the best and no matter what. And it's not that you're ignoring what's going on, but you, what you want to do is you want, you want to recognize that, yes, this is, this is happening right now. But I've had many, many good opportunities. I've had many good situations. I've had moments in my life where I am able to rise above this or that eventually somehow I do. And even if you can't find anything, but you can at least know, acknowledge that somehow you always find the solution and, and you are able to uh, implement that solution, even if it only lasts for a while, but at least you know that solutions come and you can acknowledge that they do. And so that if you think back and not work so hard work and in working in a way that's critical, maybe those, those solutions will come more fluently um, and so that you'll feel more successful. This is the word I'm seeing. And, and I don't know, fluently, it felt like they wanted to say that they that this if you are able to do this, that they'll also come more fluently and successfully, that you'll the solutions will just be the thing that comes. So that you'll yeah, problems will be there, but you will recognize the solution um more readily and 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 easily because you are not putting all of your attention into criticizing or analyzing everything that goes wrong or how you don't do everything just right um, in terms of your spiritual development. So, you know, again, you want to be mindful that your mind, your ego, um, even with the best of intentions, can still get in there and cause you to start... Um, sort of just eating away at all of the happiness as you are were prone to sort of examine everything, scrutinize everything, okay? And it, just remember these words that they break down. They just sort of break. There's a feeling, the way, the approach that you're using is just breaking down. And what you're breaking down is the, the, the prosperity, is the word I keep seeing. And I'm seeing eligibility. Um, you know, you you sort of negate that your own eligibility for a lot of things that you deserve, a lot of good that comes to you that you deserve. You don't believe it, that it's right for you or that you're um, eligible because your your mind is always breaking things down and deconstructing them into these bits that don't make sense anymore. So you, you, you have to stay with the whole picture. You know, just don't take 
an action or decision out of context, okay? And for us, we have to broaden our context. That's why we have to really rely more on our spiritual perspective so that we have that broader context for us to understand um, how our actions fit into a whole sort of um, development of, uh, of spiritual growth and lessons. So don't pick out one moment and then just analyze the hell out of that because you're, you're missing the entire context. If you look back on some things in your life, sometimes you look back at your life and you don't see, you still see it out of context. Even though you are standing here in the present now, you don't see the how certain events made it possible, no matter what the, how you, we judge them as good or bad, how they made it possible for you to be where you're standing now. Even if it's a realization that this brings you, that um, releases your this you know your soul from this um, imprisonment that you've placed yourself in because you were looking at it in a particular way, and you um, almost sort of you know punished yourself or held on to regrets or and guilt or shame when this thing or situation made it possible for you to have this um, broader understanding of yourself and your your goals and your purpose okay so let me just um, take a look and see what else is sort of coming up here but it's, it's really important um, for you to feel like that you're a part of something that you're not you know and I just want to go back to this because I kind of discovered this when I was working on um, music and, and it came to me not to take, um, to ever practice or sing a section, a particular part that I feel troubled by, um, to, to not just attack it, um, to correct it without the context of the entire composition always there in my approach. Because the whole context is what allows you to actually create what you're, you're trying to do is almost like if you were uh, crocheting or knitting or something and the, you know there's these i don't know how to explain this because i've never really done it but the, you know there's this whole pattern that this uh, you'll know what i'm trying to say but if you if you don't stick with that context you may you may would do something that doesn't make sense you know it's it's sort of um and so this is sort of the same thing with your life you want to um to, in order to really respect yourself and to be working with honesty and truth, you have to you have to um, understand the whole context of your journey, and then so that when you approach this thing that you want to make a decision, because see you want to correct, but it's really a, a choice because the universe see choices like freedom is like you always have them; they're always available to you. But when we're correcting. It's like we, we see things so limitedly. We, we see our options, that we only have a few options. But if you think choice, where you want to um, improve something, rather than fix, but improve, okay? Because that keeps that feeling of freedom and that expansion. When you want to improve something, then all you have to be aware of is that you have choices about how you can go about making that improvement. But when you say I need to fix this, then you 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 there's a feeling of of uh, that you're anxious and and that you are um, you're 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 uh, you know you have this critical um, feeling about this and you are you you just can't um, see beyond the scope of that what it is that you don't like and then you feel very stuck there okay so they want you to really um, open it up and you know also approach everything with sort of um, a sense of creativity you know i mean improvements 
are, you know, would lead you to start thinking creatively about something rather than I got to fix this problem and I got to get, then you start to become um, focused on, you know, limitations of time, resources, um, opportunity. You start thinking about limitations of those things and it causes you to make um, decisions that you um, are making in haste rather than um, with the freedom of choice and opportunity that's available to you and that you can create for yourself. Okay, so let's take a look at the Archangel Oracle card for the week. Okay, this card I've been thinking about for several weeks because I haven't seen it and wondering when, I don't know why, when it would show up in its context and um, for our understanding. Now this card is the indigo and crystal children. And it says you have a bond with children. In particular, you can help children who are sensitive. So this may be relating to um, your children, um, maybe uh, something that they're going through in terms of what we're talking about here and how you can help them to um, to learn about making choices and the freedom that um, that they have, so and and about how they approach um, their you know problems and to get them to be more solution oriented and to be creative with this. But I'm also getting a feeling that um, that we also need to be mindful as adults of our choices. As they're affecting our children, um, and you know we've seen um, this in some of the responses to some of the things that've been in the media in in the past months. Um, but I'm also getting a feeling too is that um, to be aware, and not even if you don't have children, be aware of um, your own response to events that occur in your life, and how these. You know, when we come from this place of fear, um, that our children are very sensitive and they're picking up on our fears and um, that it's, you know, maybe creating some anxiety um, within them and some um, patterns that we don't want them to develop, um, especially as we're being so um, uh, aware and, and, and trying to approach our own um, lives from a very healing place. So we want to uh, make sure that we are um, talking to them. Um, if you see a child and you you see them, um, saying the word, become excessive in terms of, you know, getting um, um, overly stimulated or um, getting anxious about something that's happening and and they can't let it go or they're stuck in it um, to help them to help them to see that they have unlimited choices help them to start thinking creatively but also you know this may also be like your own inner child too where you are um, have developed this long standing pattern where you can't see when something happens you know, you, you develop this, you get sort of trapped in this uh, high levels of anxiety because you can't see your way through it. You can't see your way out of it. Um, and that you kind of can sort of, um, you let it get sort of blown out of proportion. And um, because you are feeling limited in your power and your ability to make choices, you, you don't see the, all the choices that you have because you're seeing only, the, you're seeing this situation isolated um, and detached from everything else that's you, all of your other gifts and your abilities. Um, this card may indicate too, like some of you are adult indigos and you are very sensitive and you have, um, and to remember to sort of um, tap back into your trust, your instincts, Trust your, your inner knowing, um, you know, 
your listen to your 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 guidance um, and some 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 of the uh, crystal children too now are um, sort of adults as well so from the time when these cards came out and we started talking about this so you know be aware of don't let everything sort of just um, sort of crash come down you know come crashing on you and you're taking it all in and absorbing it and then you don't feel like you um, have any way of dealing with this you have a choice okay and um, and one of the things is to not take on everything as the burden of being your own responsibility um, and to be aware I remember when I first discovered that I was picking up on people's energy um, it happened in a class and this woman was talking about this pain she had and in a healing class and I I didn't hear her but I guess I must have heard her but I wasn't focused on her words and I started to feel it in my body all of a sudden it was so horrible and intense and then she walked past me she brushed up against me and that's when I heard her and she just kept describing it I kept feeling it unfold as she was describing it and that's when I realized oh my god my whole life um, I had been doing this without knowing it and I was taking it all on myself as though something was wrong with me that I was having all these you know different experiences um, emotionally and and didn't realize and I recognized that when I would go to someone's house um, I would pick up on this feeling it was like a sponge I was in it but and I would leave and I knew that like it wouldn't leave me it would take a day or two and I felt like that place and that, it was one of the reasons why I didn't like to visit um, certain places or um, go visit to different people's homes very often uh, when my, we would go visit the sick you know on Sundays or things like that because I I felt like them but I didn't know why <laughs> um, and I didn't know how to handle that so you know just be aware that whether it's your children or you um, that this is something that um, does happen to very highly sensitive beings so you you want to um, you want to you can by being aware of it you don't have to take it on you don't have to own it okay all right so let's take a look at the cards for the beginning week hold on let me just see if there's any additional information coming through about this okay um sort of what i'm getting i'm seeing is that this can kind of become a prison for some for some of you so uh, for some people, maybe you're not getting out as much. Maybe you're not um, your 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 soul. They're writing soul and spirit. And, and I'm just seeing these bars of like a, and I'm seeing a, a car, I'm moving in front of the bars. Like, but you're not going anywhere. Like you 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 need to um, get out more. And I think it's because you are a little sensitive um, when you're out and. You go to one area, you know, and the energy, so the crowds of people. Um, so, it, but the thing is, it, go out in nature and um, find a place where you can just, you know, um, where you can sort of absorb the peace, the healing um, and peaceful um, frequencies of nature. Also, the beauty, the beauty will help sort of um, uplift your mind and your heart and inspire it so to help you to tune in to that creative perspective um, and help you to um, connect to the whole the whole picture the whole picture meaning the universal um, frequency of, of divine love and support and beauty and joy and happiness and prosperity so they need you to not um, to stay inside, to isolate yourself, go to go to a, a spot in nature. Okay, this will help absorb those those energies, sort of cleanse, purify, so that when you go out, um, it's not so much there. And of course, you know, use energy shields. Um, um, you know, you know the violet flame, or um, you know, putting the 
a pink light around your aura or things like this um, to keep you um, shielded um, from taking all this energy. But but once you, if you meditate, this is what helped me. I meditated so that I could every day so that I knew what my energy was because it's, it's not that somebody can influence, they can only influence you because you give permission um, by your criticism of what you're feeling. And so what I did was I got myself into a place and found my true vibration. And so when I went out and I felt something shift, I just went, oh, okay. Um, I, I look, when I was working, I was teaching or something, I would be like, okay, who's having this problem? And what it did was it started making it less about me and where it, what it was really about. And sometimes it was, I was able to help someone um, and, but you can't help everybody and you have to know when it's your, your job or role to do so. Um, if I always feel like when, if I can't talk to somebody, then it's, that's my way because I feel love flow through me. And when I can't talk, I don't feel that love flowing through me. I call it channeling the love. And I know I'm not supposed to help them. There's someone else because there's not a connection there. Um, and I just accept that because everyone is safe and, and everyone is divine and equally powerful. So, you know, you're, you, you have to um, play your, know what your role is. Um, and sometimes just for you to be aware for yourself of, you know, so that you're not taking everything on. Okay, let's take a look at the card for the beginning of the week. And also the Archangel Metatron is also in charge of our own ascension process. So <clears throat> um, this this is something wherein Archangel Metatron could be coming through um, to sort of help you and you can call upon him to help you with the ascension frequencies, um, to help you um, with his geometric shape. You, know, you can place him through your chakras and, um, and sort of activate your um, fifth dimensional chakras. You can ask him to do that, to help you to open you up so you have a bigger, so that you're tapping into that broader blueprint of the divine. All right. Let's take a look at the cards for the beginning of the week. All right, so we have the, the Wheel of Fortune here, and it's Archangel Michael. And so I'm feeling um, something about this because I'm reminded of that car I saw. I'm feeling something about uh, travel and with this card and or something turning um, in your life so that a, a shift... Um, happens here. So this card in general has given us a sense that as we start off with the week, that there's a, a turning, a, a major internal shift. Now the major arcana cards deal with mainly um, the internal um, spiritual shifts that are going on within us. Um, and the minor arcana more has more to do with the outer. Um, the things in the everyday life, the outside experiences, outside of the soul spirit. So, um, so this I'm getting a sense when I was saying that word spirit soul that you're going to start to experience a shift that's going to help you, and and maybe there's a shift that is going to affect um, this week. Um, those of you who are um, highly sensitive and on your own ascension process, that maybe there's going to be a, a, an internal shift in your ascension process. So be aware of that and, and you know, be aware of your, that, that, the honor and respect the different, your sensitivity um, and your gifts and your, your, your intuition, um, especially in this week. But don't let it um, just sort of take over too much. Don't don't be too concerned. But something is for. Um, I get a sense it's positive and it's for a, a good purpose. So just go with it. Go with the flow, um, and be open to what's occurring. Let me just tune into this card and see if I get any additional uh, messages here. I'm being drawn to um, this archangel here has like a guitar or something here, electric guitar. So be, uh, exercise your creativity this week. Um, you know, connect with music. 
um, or anything in the arts, um, maybe writing, uh, journaling, you know, just anything um, to help you to process um, this shift that's going to be going on within you. And I'm seeing that it's going to be, I'm seeing the word people. So uh, people around you too are going to be experiencing uh, some of these shifts as well. All right. And now we have the, um, for the middle of the week, the Ace of Air. And, you know, here we have a Pegasus. So this, when we see Pegasus, this just means that um, high vibrational information is coming um, because the um, unicorns are very, um, like, ninth dimensional um, beings, very pure, very loving um, energy and frequency that emits from them. And so here there is this idea of new ideas um, coming through, uh, thoughts, clarity, solutions coming through. Um, and so I'm getting a sense, I was seeing before the reading started, that um, that they were showing me the word swords, dealing with the suit of swords and communication and um, intellect. And so that you've been having some, some difficulties um, getting across ideas or um, getting across your own ideas. Maybe you've had trouble um, with like brainstorming or you've had trouble, um, you've been feeling like sort of blocked um, in your creativity or you've been really struggling for um, a way to fix a problem and you've been struggling for a solution. And this is what I feel like is just gonna be this turning point in this week and that they want you to to really be aware um, especially the those of you who are indigos crystals to pay listen to your intuition and those of you who are highly sensitive those of you who are earth angels pay attention to the guidance that you receive so it's going to be very clear to you um, it, you're going to have a completely different experience um, with this it's going to and 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 the only challenge, because this card also, with like all the, the air signs or swords, it comes with challenges because it, it's going to challenge the way you were looking at things before. So don't, don't get, don't let that get to you, okay? Don't freeze and panic because you, this thing opens your mind and you see, but then you think to yourself, I'm ineligible for this. Don't start criticizing, picking apart. Stay with the, the feeling. And I'm, I'm seeing that uh, the word transition. So this is about some kind of transition and that you're gonna have to um, make and it, it's going to kind of freak you out um, as change always does because we just don't prepare for it because we are trying to prepare for to keep things uh, consistent. I mean, um, consistent. We want them to be um, consistent. We want stability. And so um, we actually work at uh, preparing to counteract change. We, we try to minimize um, the, the things that will occur around the change so that you don't, we don't have to deal with too much fallout. But if we could learn to embrace the fallout, and if and we could do that if we were creative about how we looked at change, if we 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 saw our options that that the, these changes opens up an option. It's sort of like you know um, there are things that you would never have considered if things were always status quo. You you wouldn't. You wouldn't make too many. Um, you wouldn't make too many um, um, changes in your life. You know the way you're, or the or the way you're doing something. You would just keep basically doing it the same way, tweaking it here and there. And there are some things that you that may occur to you to do, but you said to yourself, "Well, it's not necessary." I mean, so why, why, you know, why rock the boat, kind of thing. And so when changes happen like this they rock your boat so that you can rock your boat you know so that you can 
so that you can uh, mix it up a little bit and get out of that rut because you may not even realize you're in a rut until change happens. So, um, you know, there are things that you may not have seen that were expressed. You, there are things that you haven't been expressing, things you haven't been saying because you didn't want to rock the boat. But once the boat's tipped, now there's nothing holding you back. But some of us become so afraid, we become even more, uh, we suppress ourselves even more. And we make, and, and it's like we're bottling it in, and you know the pressure's going to build. And so it's got to pop, and then you're afraid. You're afraid of popping. You're afraid of making a mistake. You're afraid of saying the wrong thing. You're afraid of looking um, foolish or like out of control. So if you go with the process of change, if you prepare to be open to it, you know, be prepared to, um, to be creative about it and, and, and start, you know, just brainstorming all of your options. Forget, you know, well, yeah, that won't work because don't don't do that. I hate when people used to do that when we, I was working. You just want to brainstorm ideas. Just 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 go with it first, and then we can go back and see what you know. Sometimes even just try them out, and and what's the problem? Are you gonna look stupid because you you tried something? You know, I remember I was teaching. I was just like try something, and then I just find to say, okay, um, you know, I don't think this is working. So we're gonna go back and do this. As long as you are confident that you need in your decision, that you need to do something like that, they followed me, my students. So it, it's, um, we, we need to have more faith in, our, in ourselves and our decisions and our ability to uh, adapt. We need to have faith in that. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the card for the weekend. And we have the Queen of Earth talking about you know, this, my grandmother was a Taurus, and I, for me, this, her favorite saying was, take what you got and make what you want. And talk about adaptability, you know. She always taught that to us. Uh, take what you got and make what you want. And so, again, this is just saying, like, you know, the changes are going to happen. You're going to have these internal shifts. And, of course, these internal shifts are going to start, you're going to start to, see them reflected outside of you okay this is this is just the consequence of you move transitioning um and you know you refining your your beliefs and um and things that have grown there or you know that have been that you've been just kept active but it doesn't mean that you aren't adaptable and that word coming around the heels of what I just said in this card is what I would use right now um, to describe this queen of earth, the queen of pentacles, is adaptable um, and resourceful. And, um, you know, she can, she can spot an opportunity and she, she can create opportunities too. So, you know, that's why she's so good, you know, uh, possibly with money and things because she's just like she's not um she's not stuck in her fears you see how like, the energy in her dress just flows almost it's almost like water um and and the money just and the coins are just spiraling out of that because she's fluid she's remaining fluid um in her ability to adapt you know it's like it's like the wheel turning inside of her right that ability to adapt. So this week, focus on being adaptable. Okay, focus on being adaptable, um, and and be also be likewise be open to your your gifts, your intuition, because your intuition is bringing you information, giving you those those quick ideas, uh, giving you those really gut feelings to be able to adapt. So. Trust it like the wheel is spinning, the ideas are flowing, and and the ideas as the wheel is spinning, the ideas just get caught up in that sort of that spiral of wind, and it flows through you, and, and, and it turns out, and you can turn it out into things that you need, the resources, the support, whatever it is you need. So keep, don't, don't let yourself um, sort of... Um, 
stop this wheel from spinning with an over, um, sorry, for an active, overly active imagination, or that you're being too critical or harsh with yourself. All right, let's take a look at the this card I already pulled from the bottom of the deck. It's the Eight of Water. So this is giving us a sense that what's happening underneath everything is a sense of moving on. Okay, um, that you're ready emotionally. You you feel that like in a particular area that you, you're, you're, you're just drained and there's nothing else here. Um, you need to move on. You get a sense that this is just the best thing for everybody to move on or for you, it's the best thing. And so you start making changes that this, this energy, um, this shift causes you to start to realize that you just need to do things differently. Now, again, it could be moving or relocation here since we have these two cards, it could be that, that it's a physical relocation. But I'm getting a sense that, that there's some things that you just going to finally realize that you've had, a, you know, that you're tired of this, that this thing has been creating the same pattern over and over again, and then you're not moving in the ways that you would like to see yourself moving, that there's not enough prosperity flowing because you keep, you know, re just repeating this thing in your head over and over again, or you keep um, judging yourself this way, and somehow you just get fed up to be ready to move on. And, you know, I saw the word realistic, and you realize, like, you know, you always talk, we're always talking about being realistic, like, and that sort of limits us, you know, it's a sort of when we say that because it seems like our dreams are never realistic. But in some ways, I feel that when you say this, it's healing. Um, I'm just seeing the emerald green light here from Archangel Raphael, where in you realize that um, what's realistic is is that you aren't supposed to feel so burdened in the way that you have that you're supposed to be happy, and that you realize somehow that you have the ability to create this for yourself that the resources is within your spirit to create the happiness by the way that you choose to see your life, the way you choose to see opportunities. And everything is an opportunity. But people, in one hand, in, in, in one person's hands, that opportunity could just be, ends up being this, this um, total burden. And another, it's a total advantage. And so you realize that you've had this switch you've inside of you to turn it on or turn it off. And maybe you realize that you've been turning off the switch a lot and, and putting yourself in the dark with, and we didn't have any, uh, didn't really need to do that because you believed in some of this, this outer circumstances that you believe you're a victim to it. And now you're no longer wanting or willing to be a, a participant and victimizing yourself and you're recognizing that you have power to choose and to activate your life in the way that benefits you. So that's that's what I'm sort of getting here about this. And so, um, again, trust your in intuition. Um, I feel like there's a, a, a new step in your ascension process where that's going to create some huge shifts for you. So, yes, it'll be a little challenging. But pay attention to the ideas and solutions that are coming through um, and and the ideas of how you can turn this into something. So if you get something, an idea um, for like either it's going back to school or just whatever comes up to you, um, and go ahead and, and investigate these things. Don't don't just you know declare that you, you're just ineligible for whatever reason that your ego provides you. Don't just accept that. Take the steps. See what it's like once you get start doing it. Because a lot of stuff we just don't even know until we start. Okay? So I send you lots of love and angel blessings. And thank you all for joining this week. If you're looking for an angel reading, you can find me on my webpage at theangelschool.com on the services page, which you can find in the description link below. Also, uh, the daily card messages, you can click on the Facebook link or Twitter. 
And I'll see you next week. And have a God bless you all.